Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. In this video, we are going to be working on Proposition 15. So prop of it, Proposition 15 basically says if we have two cubed numbers, in other words, A is C times C times C, and B is D times D times D, and if A measures B, then C also measures D. We also are saying in this proposition, again starting with two cubed numbers, that if C measures D, then A measures B. So basically, they're sort of two propositions, but they're flip side of the same coin. If C measures D, then A measures B, or inversely, if A measures B, C measures D. So let's start with the first proof where we have that A measures B. So we are going to construct three new numbers where E is equal to C times C, G is equal to D times D, and F is equal to C times D. And we are going to continue by saying that H is going to be C times K, sorry, is going to be C times F, and k will be equal to d times f. So now if we look at e, f, and g, they are in continuous proportions, which is going to be equal to c to d. This is based on Proposition 11 of Book 8, although it's fairly obvious just by looking at the symbols. Likewise, we have that a, h, k and b are in continuous proportion, again according to Proposition 12 of this book, and the ratio is going to be equal to c to d. Now we have established that a measures b, and if you recall from Proposition 7 of this book, if a, if you have a series of continuously proportional numbers, if the first measures the last, it also measures the second. So if A measures B, A also measures H, according to Proposition 7 of this book. And it, as A is to H, C is to D. So since A to H is equal to C to D, then if A measures H by a certain amount, C also measures D by the same amount. And there we have shown that we have two cubed numbers, that A measured B, and here we are showing that if A measures B, C measures D. And that's it for the first part of the proof. And now we're going to look at the second half of the proof, where we start with that C measures D. We're going to construct the same number as we did the previous part of this um, proposition. So we have that H is to, A is to H is to K is to B is equal to C to D, just like before. And now, because C measures D, we have C measuring D, and A to H equals C to D, then the same way that C measures D, A will measure H, and this is according to the definition 20 of book 7. It's about ratios. And since A measures H, we know that A also measures B according to... Uh, the proposition isn't written down there, but one of the earlier propositions of this book. So we have that A is measured by B. A measures B, excuse me. So again, to cubed numbers. We have C measures D, and that leads to A also measures B. And that is it for both parts of this proposition. 